Hey guys, Daily Tech here, and today we're doing the big compare of PS Move Service versus Nolo. For those of you not familiar with what these are, these are alternative motion controllers that you can use in Steam VR. Which one of these two are going to be the winner? Or is there even going to be a clear winner? We're going to have to check out some pros and cons, and then that way you guys can decide on which one suits you best. If this is your first time visiting my channel and you enjoy all different types of custom VR, don't forget to subscribe now so you don't miss anything else in the future. Now comparing these two systems has been one of the most asked questions I had since I started posting videos of Nolo. So I figured this video is well past due so let's just get right into the comparison and we'll see how these things stand side by side. How I decided to compare these is by looking at them in five different categories to see how each one stacks up in each category. Each system has some pretty unique features to it so it's going to be a pretty tight race. The first thing to look at and the most concrete thing to look at is the price. Nolo, it's really simple. It's $199 plus shipping plus import fees and that's it. So once you add those three things together, that's the final price and everything else that you need is included. Then moving on to the PS Move service, things get a little bit different. Because the PS Move service is so custom and so modular, you could really put just about as much money or as little money into it as you want. So let's just stick to the bare essentials of what you're going to need to get things rolling. You're going to need about two to four cameras, and those cameras are about five or six bucks each. So for the cameras, you're probably going to spend roughly twenty dollars. The controllers themselves are about twenty to thirty dollars if you can find them used online. Since the controllers are pretty old they're really not too hard to find you just got to be a little bit diligent and keep looking every day so you are going to need two of these to make the comparison equal so you're looking at about fifty dollars for the two now that the virtual hmd is supported by the ps move service this is going to save you having to buy a third controller this means you can build your own custom head marker for as low as five bucks not only is this going to save you money but it's also going to make it a lot lighter on your head if you want to check out how i made that head tracker check the card in the top right of your screen i got a couple videos to show you how to make it and get it installed as far as getting the cameras hooked up you are going to need usb extension cables you are probably going to need a mix of active and passive cables depending on how far away you want to mount the cameras or how neat you want to route the cables you could be looking at anywhere from 10 to about maybe 40 or 50 dollars you're also going to need mounts for all of the cameras as well. Luckily, you can get little corner braces from Home Depot. They're going to cost you about $5 for a four pack. And those things are going to work just great. I've been using them for over a year and the cameras are holding perfectly. You're also going to need a Bluetooth adapter if you don't already have one. So those are going to cost you about $10 to $15 depending on where you buy it from. The software, completely free. So that's a massive bonus. Now, if you add all of that stuff up, you could probably get the whole thing put together for about $100 at the low end. Even if you were to add the Navi controllers to the setup to give you a little bit more customization on your controllers, it still probably won't push you too much higher than 150 bucks. So once you've collected all of the hardware that you need, you're probably looking at roughly half the price of what Nolo is, maybe a little bit higher depending if you don't have any of the gear at all. So based on the price alone, without having to drive around and pick up all the equipment, PS Move Service is definitely going to be cheaper than Nolo. The next thing we're going to take a look at is getting things set up. As it stands right now, because Nolo comes as a full all-in-one package, it is much easier to set up. At the time of filming this, all you need to do is download and run the Nolo driver, make sure RiftCat's going, connect up the hardware, put the headset marker on your head, and you're about ready to go. There's a couple extra steps you need to do if you want to mount the base station on the ceiling for the 360 experience. You're going to need to find a 3D printer to print out the clip to do that, and you're going to have to replace one of the DLLs inside of the install directory. In my experience, I did like Nolo as a front-facing system a little bit more than the ceiling mount. The ceiling mount was pretty cool, but it did have different dead spots than the front-facing. When it's facing in front, most of the dead spots in front of you are pretty much gone. But the difference between ceiling mount and front facing is an entire different video and we're not going to go there right now. So all things considered, Nolo is just about as plug and play as you can get. Riftcat's also working with them right now to integrate it even further so there's going to be even fewer steps getting it running. Riftcat eventually is going to be able to handle the entire thing. So once that happens, it really is going to feel like just one system that you're running. Then moving on to the PS Move service. 
This is where things get a little bit more spicy. You're gonna have to mount all of the cameras in different corners of your room. You're gonna have to run cables over to them and you're gonna have to find the right USB ports to plug them into your computer. When dealing with a four camera setup, a lot of people run into USB bandwidth issues because these cameras are really bandwidth hungry. So for the first time setting it up, you are gonna have to do a bit of troubleshooting with this. But with a little bit of patience, you will find the right combination. Once you got the camera set up in your room, you're also gonna have to make sure you've got consistent room lighting. So if that room's got a great big window, you better find something to cover it up or just make sure you plan to play after the sun's gone down so the room lighting is always gonna be the same. If you're not buying the third controller for your headset, you're gonna have to build your own marker. This does take a little bit of time. You'll also have to edit your steamvr.vr settings file in your steamvr installation. This part is kind of good, kind of bad, all in one because you do get to fully customize to exactly how you want, but it does take time and it's a little bit of trial and error to find what works well for you. Then yes, SteamVR does handle the motion controllers just fine, but the head tracking is a different story. So we need to install FreePie and PS Move FreePie Bridge. These two programs together is what's going to give us the head tracking. So again, that's more programs to get started before you play and more setup that you're gonna to need to do. The controllers themselves to get them set up and calibrated is a little bit of a task on its own. You're gonna to have to connect the controllers to the computer by Bluetooth, make sure the color is calibrated for all the cameras. You're gonna to have to do a pose calibration and make sure the room layout's gonna look just right. And even after doing this a whole bunch of times, I don't think I've ever nailed it the first time through. So all of these setup steps are completely necessary to get things running. They're not very forgiving at all and it does take a lot of patience and precision. So if you are attempting it, make sure you know where to reach out for help. A great place to start is right here at the PS Move Service Google Groups. You'll find all kinds of different ideas and troubleshooting steps in here. I'll put a link to it in the description below. So needless to say, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to get everything running the way you want. And even if you have everything all set up and ready to go, there's still going to be a little calibration to do from time to time. If a camera gets bumped, you're recalibrating. If the lighting condition changes in your room, you're recalibrating. And also, you're always going to want to try to tweak it just a little bit to get that little bit more performance out of it. Now there is an opportunity to get this integrated with RiftCat. However, since it's a free software and there's just a small handful of developers that are working on it, we really shouldn't be expecting this sort of feature to come soon. But lastly, let's end off on a positive note, it is 100% wireless once you're finished. So that does dull the pain just a little bit of how difficult this is to set up. For those of you keeping score, that's one point for Nolo, one point for PS Move Service. The next thing to look at are the controllers themselves. Now looking at the Nolo controller first, this thing is much newer. It looks far more modern and rightfully so because it's made almost a decade later. This controller as well, it's painfully obvious that this was mocked from the Vive controller. The trackpad on the front of it is almost exactly the same as the Vive, it's pretty much got the same feel as well. There's also the system and application buttons right here as well. Now the difference on these is that the Vive controller has the one button above the touchpad. I think actually having them both below the touchpad is much better. This way you're not having to reach awkwardly above the touchpad to hit that button. There's also the grip buttons on the side of the controller, I'll let you take a look at that right there. There's one of these on each side, again, just like the Vive controller. And probably my favorite part of the controller is the trigger on it. This trigger feels fantastic, it's got great resistance to it, and there's a really nice click once you bottom it out. This thing is done absolutely perfectly. So in most ways, this controller is pretty much flawless except for one small thing. And yes, that was a little bit of a pun because the controller itself does feel very small. For me, I wish this controller was about 5-10% to 10 bigger, I think it would fit in your hand much nicer. As you can tell, holding it up next to the PS Move controller, the size difference is pretty obvious. And when you're holding this thing, you're holding it in your fingers as opposed to holding it in your palm. So I'll let you take a look at it there. So it's right in your fingertips as opposed to the PS Move controller, which actually fits right in your palm. And that is a lot more convenient. It just feels a lot nicer, you feel like you have a better grip on it. So when you are holding this thing by your fingers, you do have to get used to hitting the buttons and moving your hand around while it's not in your palm. It does make it feel a little bit more clumsy, however, I wouldn't say it's a complete deal breaker. But the PlayStation Move controller does fit really nice. It feels like you have a really good grip on the controller. I have no worry about throwing this thing and I don't even care that there's no wrist strap on it. But the button placement is a lot different than the Vive. This adds a little bit of complication because there's no grip buttons on the sides 
and you also don't have that big touchpad in the middle. So what you have to do is, as I said earlier, you have to map the buttons to where you think is going to work best. So the four buttons that are going to be around the PlayStation button, you can map it for your application button menu and for the system button. Since there's four, you can put them however you want. You can even put two of them on there. The move button in the middle here is going to be emulating the touchpad. There are a couple ways to map this move button to the touchpad. What you could do is press the move button and then move the controller in the direction you want to go for the touchpad. Or you can actually map the button presses to one of these four buttons around the edges. This of course is going to cause some complications with the other buttons that you need to map. So unfortunately with the PlayStation Move controller, you can't 100% mimic the Vive controller like you can with Nolo. There are a few workarounds. You can modify the button structure for different games, but again, that adds a little bit more of a pain in the ass. And if you are interested on how to map this thing to a Vive controller, check the card in the top right of your screen. I've got another video there showing you exactly how to do that. All is not lost though, because you do have the option of adding the PlayStation navigation controller. This controller is a little bit better to emulate the Vive controller. The thumbstick on the front is going to actually mimic the entire touchpad. You have two buttons on the front here and that's going to be for your system menu and for your application menu. And this D-pad here can actually be programmed for just about anything you want as well. On the back of it, you're going to have your normal trigger right here. And also up here, you can map that for the grip button. And when you're playing, that actually feels like it makes a lot of sense. But the problem is, is that you do need to use this thing with the PlayStation Move controller, so you'll have to make your own clips to join the two together. The PlayStation Move controller is a little bit heavier than what the Nolo controller is, but the weight difference really isn't all that significant, and I don't think you're going to notice it while you're playing. The one thing that is a huge pain is that to charge this thing, you either need a PlayStation 3 or 4, or you have to have it plugged into your PC while the PC is running. Outside of those options, you can use a proper charging dock that are built for these Move controllers. Whereas the NOLA controllers come with this really fancy charging cable like you see here. Then you got three micro USBs here to charge both controllers and the base station all with one USB port. So to pick a winner between the two controllers is really subjective and I don't think there is a clear winner. I myself have gotten really used to using the PlayStation Move controller. The emulated touchpad for me works really well. And the fact that it fits in my hands so nicely is a huge bonus for me. So for me, I'm going to pick the Move controller but I have a feeling a lot of you guys are going to think differently on that. So the next part we're going to look at is the part that everyone probably came here to see, and that's the tracking performance. A really easy way to gauge this is to do a side-by-side -side comparison in Tilt Brush. So let's head into game, and we'll check that out side-by-side. -side. Nolo tracks amazingly well while in view of the base station. This is important because since there's only one base station, you will find dead spots. You can move those dead spots around if you ceiling mount it, but since there's only one line of sight, you can't fully get rid of dead spots. This is where the PS Move surface just stomps it. You have a full 360 degree view and you can reposition cameras to ensure you have the best coverage possible. Just because it's fully 360 doesn't mean it's as accurate as Nolo, because it's not. This is really a limitation of the low res cameras that track the controllers, different room lighting, and precision of how well you calibrated everything. Not to mention, there's also a few other factors. You can get some seriously good tracking, but the NOLA will still feel much smoother and more precise. Best of all, there is no calibrating with the NOLA controllers, so as long as it's set up right, it's going to work great. If you take a look here on the right, you can see how smooth and accurate the tracking is with NOLA. And on the left, you're going to see a small bit of jitter with the PS Move service. But even with NOLO, there are still some jumps here and there when tracking is lost. Once you get used to it though, it's not as bad as it seems, but when you do compare the NOLO tracking with the PS Move, there is no question which one is more accurate feeling. In most games, this won't affect you too much, but there are some that require very steady hand and precise control. And same thing goes with being 360 degrees or not. The NOLO controllers will try to make up for it with a 180 degree spin feature, but I find that it's somewhat disorienting, and in some games it just flat out doesn't work at all because the hotkey needed to do it interferes with some of the gameplay. But I really do like the option of being able to turn all the way around and not have to worry if I'm going to hit a dead spot soon. As soon as you have to think about hitting the 180 degree hotkey, or remember that there's a dead spot coming up as you turn, it pulls you out of the immersion and puts a bit of a rain cloud on the experience. Now, if you were able to add a second base station to the NOLO system, that would be incredible and it would be a winner, hands down. But at this point, it's really not possible and I don't even know if it's going to be possible down the road. 
That being said, that brings me to the fifth and final point that we're going to compare today. Ongoing development and support. As I mentioned previously, the PS Move service is developed by a small handful of people. However, the community for it is absolutely incredible and there is a decent number of people who are able to help with it. There's many different people helping to pitch in little bits here and there to make it a little bit better and the opportunity to expand what it's capable of is virtually limitless. Nolo, on the other hand, is actually a proper company that's putting this together. So everything that's being done is going to be done by their game plan. If they decide to move on to a version 2 of this, then this might lose support altogether and you're going to have to buy the second version. And the way that the hardware is designed right now, there isn't a whole lot of opportunity for expansion. So I'm not really sure if it's because the PS Move service has been out a lot longer, but I do see a lot more forum posts and ideas on how to make that better as opposed to Nolo. Nolo is such a plug and play product that once it's plugged in, it's working. Everyone just wants to leave it and there's really no thought to expand it just yet outside of that second base station. So in conclusion, there's a lot to like in each one of these systems and deciding which one is going to suit your needs the most is only up to you. Now, if I have to pick one for myself, I think I'd pick the PS Move service for a couple reasons. A big part of this is, is because it's a system that works well and I spent a lot of time working on it myself to get it all put together with some of the help from the community. Also, the fact of having 360 degrees tracking with virtually no dead spots and absolutely no wires at all is super appealing and the fact that it's expanding and constantly new things are coming out for it is really exciting and it's something i'm not ready to give up yet but looking at the nolo the fact that it's so plug and play and that the tracking right out of the box is absolutely fantastic you don't have to worry about lighting conditions there's virtually no setup at all it's great for people that just want to pull something out of the box and get using it within the next hour and i think that's where the ps move service loses out is because it's not plug and play at all you will spend time troubleshooting it and it does take a bit of knowledge to figure out what each setting does and how to make sure you're getting the most out of it there are countless people that i've tried to help but they've given up halfway through only because it's not working or it's just simply causing too many problems and they don't feel like it's worth it anymore. But if you do put the time in and you work at it, you will get some good results and to me, I think that's somewhat satisfying in itself. So if you're like me and love tinkering with this stuff, putting things together and seeing the final result after a bunch of hard work, the PS Move service is probably exactly for you. Otherwise, you might just want to take the easy way out and go with Nolo. Nothing wrong with it, it's just really what is going to work best for you. So hopefully this video helped to give you a little bit better idea of what each system involves and which one is going to work best for you. I wish I could say one of them is perfect, but neither one is. They each have different things they excel at and different things that make you nuts. And if those things don't really make you nuts, then maybe the choice is going to be a little bit easier for you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.